Hi everyone and welcome back uh, to this series of three phase uh, problems. So in this question here, we have two loads connected in parallel as usual, and we are giving the power rating of every single load of these two. And we are giving here uh, extra information that we didn't see before, which is a feeder capacity of 250 amp. What does this mean? It means that the feeder, the maximum current can carry is 250 amp. And we will see later on how we will use this piece of, of information. We are given the line to line voltage here. It's given to us as root three times 680 volt. As I said, and the rating of each load is given to us. So in A, we want to find the value of the system power factor, active, reactive, and apparent power. So for these two connected load, now this load is not connected yet, and this is clear from the digit line. So we want to find what is the system piece of the system, the Q of the system, power factor of the system, and the apparent power of the system. So that is very close to some of the questions we, we did before. So here we want to find uh, P1 and Q1. Then we want to find P2, Q2, and then we will add them. So that this is the approach. So now for the load number one, P1 is already given to us as 240 kilowatt. Now we know the power factor is given to us as 0.8. So theta 1 is equal to cosine inverse of 0.8, which is equal to 36.87. Now once I know theta 1 and P1, we have the power triangle. In the power triangle, we can find all the other quantities once we know two of them. So this is theta, this is P, this is S, and this is Q. So your Q1 is basically P1 tan theta 1. And if you substitute, you will find this is equal to 180 kVAR. Then for P2, we are given here the, the S, 140 kVA and the power factor. So we are given the apparent power and theta. So from this, your S will be equal to S2 times cosine of theta2, which is the 140 times the power factor, which is the 0.85. And this uh, will give me P2 equal to 119 kilowatt. Now we can find uh, Q2, which is S2, sine theta 2. So we need to find theta 2. Now our theta 2 is cosine inverse of 0.85. And we can find the angle from this, which is 31.7. And from that, you can find that is your, your Q2 is equal to 140 times sine of 31.7. And this will give me 3.75 kVAR. Okay, so it's the same approach as we did before. Then it says here, find the uh, active reactive power of the system. So we said the P of the system is equal to P1 plus P2. And if you add these two quantities, you will uh, you will get your total power, which is 359 kilowatt. So you're not just, you need Add P1 and, and P2. Your Q of the system is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So we just add Q1 and Q2, and you will get the, the value of 253.75 kVAR. Now we are done with these. Now we can find the apparent power S of the system is equal to p of the system square plus q of the system square and this will give me a total of 439.6 kva okay now the power factor the power factor which is basically our cosine theta of the system 
and this is the power factor of the whole the two loads together and again from the power triangle it is equal to p of the system divided by s of the system which is equal to 0.816 and it is lagging power factor it makes sense because both power factors are lagging so definitely that would should be a lagging power a power factor okay so that's very similar to the previous questions now in b it says if the plan to expand now we want to expand and include a third motor connected in delta and this motor absorb 100 kva at a lagging power factor of 0.8 can this load be added without exceeding the feeder capacity? Okay, so in this question, we want to find what is the total I, I line here of the system after adding this, this new load. Now, if this current is more than the capacity, which is 250 amp, it means we cannot add this, this load. If it is less, then we can add we can add this load. Okay, so now we understand what is required. Then we need to find P3 and Q3, which is from this load. So my P3 is equal to 100 times the 0.8, which is the power factor, which give me 80 kilowatt. Now my Q3 will equal to 100 and 0.6, which is the sign of the same theta that we already found here. We did the sign of 36.87, so it's 0 0.6, and this gives me 60 kVAR. Now we want to see what is the total P, Q, and S for this load. So my P total would equal to my P3 plus P of the system, and when you add this, we'll get 439 kilowatt, and my Q total is equal to my Q3 plus Q of the system, and this gives me 301, 3.75. From this, you can find your S. Your S total is equal to P total square plus Q total square, and this will give me a total KVA of 539.89 KVA. Okay. Now we know the total S, but S total is equal to root 3 V line I line total. This is the total current that we are looking for. So this is I L total equal to the S total divided by root 3 V line. So this is equal to 539.89 times 10 to the power 3 divided by root 3. Now, the line-to-line -line voltage was given to us as 680 times root 3. So it's root 3 times 680. And if, when you calculate this, you will find the current is 264.5 amp, which is more than the 250 amp, the capacity. So, no, the load cannot be added without thermally stressing the feeder and when we exceed the load current capacity that can cause some damages to the to the cable so we should not we should not do that so the answer for this question no we cannot add we can't add the load